Es el turno ahora de conocer las recetas ancestrales, estrategias para el éxito. Bueno, we now give the floor to Mr. Takehiro Ono, a real chef. He will tell us his story and how he used different elements. Konnichiwa, Mr. Ono, and welcome. Quick as the wind, silent as a forest, ferocious as fire, solid as a mountain, My name is Ono. I'm going to cook two traditional Japanese dishes. Konnichiwa. My name is Takehiro Ono. I'm going to show you a recipe to reach success. But before coming here, I, this morning I was thinking about success. What is the meaning of success? I have not yet reached success. I'm far, far away from success. Um, I dream of something that's still far. But I'll tell you why I'm here. Why a Japanese who spoke not a single word of Spanish, but here I am on the stage speaking in Spanish to all of you. I have a whole program uh, on Latin American television, and I think it's like a miracle, but what uh, do? What is my life like? This is uh, my great-grandfather. He was born in uh, the Ono samurai family five generations before me. He was part of the Japanese uh, revolution at the Meiji era. Remember the film, The Last of the Samurais, yes? Well, he was against Tom Cruise. Uh, he, those were the bad guys. So my great-grandfather participated uh, in that revolution. Then the samurai were finished, and the new government or Japan offered them land in Hokkaido so they should migrate to the north that was empty. And all the samurais went. My great-grandfather went to Hokkaido. And the climate is six months of winter under um, below 20 degrees. And he had a very hard time. He couldn't. That's why I was born in the north of Japan. 
The teachings of the samurai were always present in my family. I remember respect, humility, honor, three important principles. For a kid, I was beautiful, wasn't I? Uh, Forty years later, one changes. But to teach a Japanese child, we use res we teach respect by teaching them. Don't say I want, I want, I want to have a soft drink. No, I have to ask my mother. Do you want to drink anything? And she would say, No, son. What would you like to drink? And I said, Yes, please, a soft drink. That's the way we ask for something. And this is where you start respecting others. You think about others first, and not I want. Then humility. I know nothing, absolutely nothing. The world is so huge. Gastronomy is so vast. I know nothing. So all life becomes a learning process. And the other is honor. Do you know the word for on a harakiri? Harakiri. Why do Japanese samurais committed harakiri for their honor? So when they make a decision. They um, put their own lives into that decision. Their life is at stake. If something goes against that, for my honor, I will commit harakiri. This is the honor of a samurai. I grew up with these teachings inside my family and my head. And when I was an adolescent, my father told me to go um, to the Navy in Japan, um, you can imagine, oh, well, the kamikaze were uh, created there. My school taught that mindset. Maybe the new generation of Japan, I was there as a boarding student. I was taught discipline, 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 how the Japanese character should be forged. I was there at 16, 17, 18, under the rule of discipline. So my friends outside the school always told me, you are too Japanese. It seems that you were born in 1800. You're crazy. Always, my friend told me, uh, and to me that was normal because that was my style of education. And I had, I thought, I'm not wrong. This is the way it should be. If you want to be a Japanese, I'm proud I'm Japanese. I have a samurai family. That was always in my mind. So I went to the university to study chemical nutrition, to become a chef. And after university, I went to a school cooking school. To attend a cooking school, I had to work to earn some living to pay for the fees. So I went to this restaurant and I met my teacher Takase. He was a professional and I would do the dishwashing. Obviously, uh, to start from scratch, to learn to cook, you need to do the dishes first. I was a student at the cooking school, but they educated me. How to behave in the kitchen. It requires education to be in the service of gastronomy. What kind of service to give your customers? And this marked me very, very much. One day, when there were no customers or they had not yet arrived, the young cooks speaking to each other said, what, what did you do yesterday? Did you go for a drink with girls? They were talking like that casually. And when the customer came, mm, hello, welcome, good evening. And they, this movement is not professional. He taught me, you have to stand like this, smiling. That, and when you see the customers, good night, good evening, um, welcome. This marked me very, very much. One day for three hours, I was standing for three hours like this, and no customers showed up. I couldn't stand it any longer. That is what young people do. But at the time, this teacher educated me. After 20 years, I invited him to Buenos Aires to, de to do together a cooking class. For the first time, he left Japan to come to Buenos Aires. He's a real chef, and he accepted the investigation. 
and I wanted to thank him for his uh, teachings. He educated me. He didn't just teach me how to um, make sushi. I also met this other teacher, Akihiko Manada. Akihiko Manada is a Japanese who does Spanish cooking in Japan. He lived in Spain for a long time, then he went back to Japan, and he started teaching the techniques of the Spanish meals. When I attended his classes, he was so passionate for the Spanish food that I was moved. I talked to him and I said, I want to follow your classes. And he looked at me, he said, how weird you are. And I was like this, very straight, uh, like a Japanese uh, student should be, teacher, please teach me. I want to learn from you. And he looked at me and he said, he's crazy, stupid boy. And he said, if you become the number one in the cooking class, I will help you. And that school had 2,500 students. How could I become the number one student? Three months later, he called me to his room and said, oh no, I have something to tell you, something very hard for you to receive. Yes, teacher, I said. And he said, you have no talent for gastronomy. What? I said. Sorry, teacher, could you repeat that? He said, you have no talent for gastronomy. In the kitchen, you need certain skills. If you play good baseball or football, you have skills, and that helps you work in a kitchen. And I was very much of, I couldn't move fast, things would fall. I was not, I had no talent. But... I tried. He told me, if a boy has talent and works eight hours a day, um, you, you start working 16 hours tomorrow. Yes, I said, yes, teacher, thank you. And this is, I left from then on, work is 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day. Who said eight hours? And I have to follow that opinion, in, to be being a chef is my dream. I am the protagonist of my own life, and I will make decisions of how many hours I need to work. If I have no talent, I just need a little bit more strength and lots of work. That's the only way out. There were many boys with talent. I was never number one. I was ninth place in the final exam. But the teacher called me, and he said, Oh no, this is my card, uh, this is my friend, um, it's a restaurant, I talk to him, and he's waiting for you. Tomorrow, go tomorrow. I received it, I said, yes, teacher. Where is it? 2,000 kilometers away from where I was studying. How much money will I make? He said, I don't know, maybe nothing. I don't know, no idea. And I had a girlfriend, by the way. That happens. You must make decisions. Everything personal comes together at the f same time, and we must make a decision. And I chose to go and work, because my teacher had given me this card, and I trusted him. So I went to the north of Japan. I entered this restaurant. Vasco is the name. This is the flag of the Basque country. It's Basque country in Japan. That was very odd, 20 years ago, the only restaurant in Japan of its kind. And I entered this restaurant. A teacher was waiting for me. His name, Koji Fukaya. He taught me to be a professional in gastronomy. For example, if I cook beef, half, half. I add fried potatoes, but today, at this very moment, for you, the cooking point is one second, not a second before or after. Do you understand what I mean by this? He asked me a medium, for example, but his medium is one second. And we in the kitchen tried to get to that one second. We tried. Every day, 60 people would come. Uh, we too worked in the kitchen. 
every customer we tried for every customer a table with four people the wife said how old are you what we have to change the points of cooking and he said this teacher i have is crazy we cannot do that we cannot do each one individually but we tried we tried every single day we'll never be perfect but we should always try that's what he taught me then uh, after working two years with him he presented me his teacher in the north of Spain, in San Sebastián, the Basque countries. His teacher was waiting for me. He's called Luis Irizar. He's a great cook in Spain, a great cook today, and many great cooks uh, learned from him. Many, not techniques, but personality. He's a great cook. A great cook is always a great personality. That's what he told me when he banged my head. I don't know why the Basque love to hit each other on the head. All the time they are hitting each other on the head. Pa, pa. And he said, they are a great cook is, has a great personality. You have to learn personal things. You have to make your personality stronger. He presented a restaurant called Suberoa. At that time, it was the best restaurant in the Basque country or probably the best in Spain later on, and then the 10 best restaurants in the world. I joined this restaurant. My f this, I was the first Japanese speaking no Spanish in that kitchen. So what happened? Uh, three carrots, someone would shout, and it was just a sound for me. I didn't know what they meant. Curry up! Oh no, hurry up with the carrots! I looked at them. I couldn't get a clue of what they were saying. Because if you don't understand the language, that's what happens. And in the cook, in the kitchen, you need to act quickly. And I couldn't react. So in the end, I had to work in the garden. I couldn't cook. I was in the garden. Inside the kitchen, the only word I knew, carbon, coal. I had to carry the coal into the kitchen. While I waited for coal, I had to peel the uh, onions and that sort of job. I worked two years doing those two things because I don't study much. I don't study languages. I could have paid for classes, but I couldn't because uh, I was an intern. I had no money. I had this uh, internship. So my father, when I finished university, said, you, you manage on your own. I paid your university already. I have no more money. So remember samurai discipline. But if there's no money, uh, it's hard. Just with discipline, you cannot live only on discipline. So the only good restaurant, uh, well, this good restaurant gave us food. But when I had my holidays, nobody paid for my food. I hated vacations because for 15 days I had no food. So after two years, um, Master Hilario Arbelais uh, helped me with um, getting a visa for a Japanese cook. At the time, um, I was the first professional Japanese um, cooking Spanish food there, and I got my visa, and I finished my internship. There were clashes, ethics, moral customs, very, very different. For two years, I said, I can't stand it any longer. I can't stand it any longer. I buy milk, and tomorrow I'll have cafe con leche. Eight cooks living in the same small house, and they used my milk, and tomorrow uh, we'll buy some for you, Ono. I said, you're going to buy tomorrow? Okay, I'll write this down. What's your name? Javier? I'll write this down. Javier will buy milk tomorrow. Don't drink my milk. But Javier forgot the next day. And I don't have milk. And without milk, uh, Gabriel stole milk from me. That, that's how I saw it. I, I was so angry, but I couldn't speak the language. 
Javier, Javier, remember, I did like this, milk, milk, just that. I was so stressed, maximum stress. I had no money. So in the end, I went to the streets to sing. In San Sebastian, on a holiday, I would sing on the streets. In YouTube, by the way, <laughs> I had a strategy. The day before uh, there was a soccer game, I went to the field because our restaurant was so famous they would give tickets to the poor cooks and I got my tickets I went to the field I painted my face like Japanese in white and blue and when the cameras went by I was there oh this is the crazy Japanese I was always taken by the camera the following day when I sing in the streets in Japanese, all monies and all coins would come to me. I saw you yesterday at the soccer match because I was blue and white. But I had to do that for a living. And I wanted to be in that restaurant because it was one of the 10 best restaurants in the world. And I uh, knew that I was working hard to get there. So I had to bear the situation and I wanted to become a chef. That had been my dream for many, many years. That was my dream. I met this boy in the fifth, in my fifth year in Spain. I was clashing against a wall. Uh, one Japanese doing Basque cuisine in the Basque country. Will they come to eat in my restaurant? Will the bus come to you in my restaurant? And I started questioning myself. I don't know if there are any Basque here, but Basque are hard-headed. And I uh, clashed against their honor, their pride. They are so proud of their original culture and cuisine. And I hit my head against that wall. So when I met Fernando Troca, an Argentinian, I asked him, what's life like in Argentina? And he said, well, fine, immigrant country. Oh, lots of people, lots of immigrants. Yes, he said. Oh, do you think there are possibilities for me if I do Basque cuisine in Argentina? Could I make a living? And he said, if it's tasty, yeah, why not? It's true. If I do Japanese or Basque or Chinese cuisine, if it's tasty, what's the problem? Because we are professionals. Good or it's good meal or nothing. So, Fernando, take me to Argentina. So I arrived in Argentina. I had a Spanish visa. I was a cook in one of the 10 best restaurants in the world. And I decided to go to Argentina. Fernando thought I was crazy. For eight years, sing, after singing in the streets, I learned uh, elegant menus. But I got to Argentina. And I was illegal at first because I arrived with a rucksack. I didn't have a job. I remember that here in Uruguay, in Punta del Este, I came for, for three seasons. I worked very hard, but I couldn't show that dish. I couldn't show it. It was big, 600 grams of beef. It was huge. I hadn't, couldn't decorate that. Where do I put my decorations? I have sauces beautiful with beetroot, but where do I put it? On the beef, on the beef. That's the only way, that's it. Well, one day I've, I heard that a cook is always a um, cook, and the owner of the restaurant is very important in hierarchy. The cook is down there. You don't understand business. You don't understand about business. You are simply an artist. So at that time, I made a decision. I decided to go back to Japan in the year 2000. I never imagined that my father was going to turn into my teacher. My father 
worked as a hotel manager for all, during all his life. It's a Yamaha group that had 10 hotels. And he retired. So he said, if you want the know-how of my life, I'll teach you. And I said, good. Until that moment, I did not know what my father was like, really, because my father was like a very quiet Japanese, never speaking about the job in the hotel, but he never talked about his job. All his life, he was close to the Yamaha founder, and the Yamaha founder taught him how to do business. So he had the know-how that he wanted to share with me. I'm an artist cook. I had no idea about business. Cost, Excel, never tried it in my life. That was my, I was 35 at the time. The first day he said, go and learn computing. I cannot talk with you if you don't know how to use a computer. And at that time, when my father compelled me, he said, don't call me f father, call me teacher. Yes, teacher, master. So I went to his classes, and I said, "Ask, uh, go to the bank and ask for money. And I said, how? How do I do that? Oh, do your business plan. Plan? What's that, a business plan? We went to the restaurant. We drew this plan. The bank rejected my proposal 15 times. And on the 16th time, he said, he said, poor thing, I'll help you, I'll help you. So when I went back with this loan, he said, yes, you, you, you were able to achieve it, yes. I said, not far, I couldn't call him father. And then I learned about strategies, management, meeting the standards, that was very important, and the regulations, and he told me four words, realize, now, correct, continue. We should always pay attention to realize what's going on, to be aware, to pay attention. If you don't realize, go back to Argentina, he said. Pay attention, pay attention, always pay attention. If you realize, oh, do it now, now, because your competitors will make you lose. Do it now. Then, when you make um, too quick a decision, you make mistakes, so you have to correct. But the first step has been done. You're correct. After correcting, when you look for the right road, you have to continue to standardize what you do. This is what he taught me. After working with my father for four years, I went back to Argentina. I wanted to revenge. I wanted to uh, take back my opportunities in Latin America, but that's not easy. I couldn't go into a restaurant uh, using this Japanese discipline. I had to live. I had my Argentinian woman and wife and children. I needed a restaurant and I had to cook lots uh, over lots of uh, lettuce. This is a mountain of lettuce, but they, they would sell a lot. As long as they sell, I don't mind. It's good business and I can make a living. They accepted that. But in my heart, I was hoping to show that I had learned something else. I want to show, I want to show. One year, one year two years, third year, that was my greatest opportunity. I did a gourmet casting. 24 chefs participated and they took me, just me. I thought, 23 chefs will prepare one dish. They will probably prepare the best. A Patagonian lamb with a sauce of Malbec Mendoza wine uh, or wild otter with roti potatoes. I'm sure they will do that. I will do the worst dish ever. Rice, leftover rice, because my mother cooked too much rice. I invented a story. And in the fridge, I had ketchup, chicken, onion, and eggs. That's the only thing I have. So I did sorted um, yellow with red ketchup. I did a crab. I put that inside the crab. And then I used ketchup and wrote a smile on it, a smiley face. But uh, while I was doing this, I didn't look um, that 
um, as I was um, cooking, I didn't look down. People know me for seven years, but uh, I've been now 17 years in Argentina. Ten years in my life, I worked really hard with no holidays, with no rest. My body was moving like an automat. Uh, I needed that. So that's what I showed the cameras, said, this is the, and this is where I started to work. They chose me. So I started to work gourmet. And uh, the name Ono appeared. I was working at a shopping mall at the time uh, over <laughs> tops of lettuce. That's not bad as a job because I had 17 uh, kiosks or shops. Th cost, human resources, training, I did everything, but always uh, mountains of lettuce, and I wanted to do something different. So I took some lessons, and the mission in my life was to come back to Latin America and return what Latin America gave me. They gave me a tremendous opportunity, so I have to return it. I have to return what my teachers taught me. What did my teacher uh, teach me? I want to do the same for young people in Latin America because they are the future of Latin America. So I made a decision and I said, today I don't have my restaurant because if I had a restaurant, I had to look, I would have to look after it. I would have to be present there. Now, I cannot um, respond to Latin America by looking after my restaurant. So I do tours in Latin America. I do motivation uh, presentations. I cook for 20 minutes, but I talk to young people to motivate them. This is a treasure for me. I'm looking forward in this picture. I'm looking the life of samurais is always before your eyes. Um, last day I was in Spain, I burnt my visa. Because I said, if I'm going to Argentina, I will fail. But if I have the visa, I will come back to Spain. And my friends and my teachers said, "What? come back if something happens to you. I said, no, I will keep on moving forward. If I fail, I will stand up and continue. I'm always looking uh, forward and upwards. Uh, you don't need to look that way up. Just a few minutes, just a few minutes, a few centimeters. Start from the bottom and move up. Everything is worthwhile. Everything is worthwhile. And today I am so grateful for people who support me. I thank uh, Latin America. And I know, um, I don't know what success is in my life or what it means. I'm halfway there. If I stop and die, I will die with a smile. At that point, I will say, is that success or not, I will know. Uh, Furin Kazan is the um, samurai teachings. Uh, this is a strategy also in China. Um, this was taught by a Chinese, um, uh, to be quick as wind, to make decisions quick, to believe in your vision. When you make decisions, um, you should not hesitate. If you hesitate, you end up by doing nothing. You have to believe. You have to be silent as a forest, study, listen to others. And uh, when you see a vision, um, be silent, take your time, listen. And when you make a decision, you are strong, strong as fire, you attack. And when you make a decision, you should trust, you should be stable, you should be um, have a decision and be as strong as a mountain. You decide this is the way, this is where I'm heading to. Don't change, go ahead. Keep on, keep on. And this is very simple and this is what I have inside my mind. And finally, I will finish with a video. The last chapter in my trip to Japan. I want to convey a message for Latin America. And this is what I have here for you. By the way, tonight at 
we were, we have a new program on the television. So if you go to the Chan El Gourmet program, uh, I will be there tonight at nine. So my presentation will finish with this video. My family, I have traveled a lot. I made friends. Good afternoon. This is to us. I found my masters and their teachings are with me even today. Happiness when cooking beer. This is like a school, right? Beer comes afterwards. The simple gesture of a knife. This is the last present that you gave me. This is a knife. It's really a treasure for me. Thank you very much. I'm the one who should be thankful. The silence of my master of best cuisine. I asked him, why do you do this job? And he said one word. A client is waiting for us. Just that. A client is waiting. Just that. Thank you very much. Life drove me to the land of my fantasies, to my early childhood country. You know, some people call that serendipity, but I call it destiny, fate. You can see the train there. To share this trip with you, not only updated my Japanese biography, it also made me feel in a journey, in an endless journey. Maybe that might be my destiny to travel, to migrate, to learn, and to transmit. Thank you very much for accompanying me, and thank you very much for your support. Arigato, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much for being here.